In a striking moment during a recent concert in Columbus, Ohio, Kodak Black, a well-known rapper and vocal supporter of Donald Trump, found himself at the intersection of politics, identity, and the fallout from controversial remarks made by the former president regarding Haitian immigrants. As the lights dimmed and the crowd roared, Kodak played a clip of Trump's incendiary statements, which have since ignited outrage and discussion across social media and news platforms. In the clip, Trump voiced his anger about what he described as an invasion of communities by 21 million immigrants, including those from Haiti and Venezuela. I'm angry about Venezuelan gangs taking over Aurora, Colorado, and I'm angry about illegal Haitian migrants taking over Springfield, Ohio. You see that mess, don't you? He said, painting a picture of fear and hostility toward immigrant populations. After playing the clip, Kodak Black turned to the audience, visibly charged. That shit crazy. That shit true? He asked, attempting to gauge the crowd's reaction. Before they could respond, he boldly declared his allegiance to the controversial politician. Man, I ain't gonna lie, homie. I'm a motherfucking Trump supporter. This statement was met with a wave of boos from the audience, illustrating the divisive nature of Trump's rhetoric and its impact on communities, including those with immigrant roots. Kodak, who identifies as Haitian, addressed the complexity of his position. I'm Haitian. How y'all feel about this election, she t? I feel like we fucked anyway. I ain't with that Kamala Harris sheet either. What the fuck going on in America? His comments reflected a broader disillusionment with the current political landscape, where many feel disenfranchised regardless of party affiliation. Determined to confront the misconceptions head on, Kodak announced his intention to visit Springfield, Ohio, the town that had become a focal point for Trump's comments. I'm finna go to Springfield tomorrow. I gotta see this Shay T. I ain't smelling that. I ain't see no Haitian eat no cat, homie. When y'all show me a Haitian eating a cat, then y'all can say that shitty, he said, referencing an absurd rumor that had gained traction in the community. The origins of the misinformation can be traced back to a Facebook post by Erica Lee, a local resident who, in a moment of anger over her neighbor's missing cat, accused Haitian immigrants of attacking the pet. This unsubstantiated claim quickly spiraled out of control, leading to heightened tensions and unfounded fears within the community. Local law enforcement found no evidence linking Haitian individuals to any animal disappearances, but the damage was done. Lee's post had gone viral, influencing public sentiment and prompting reactions from figures like Trump. In the weeks following the incident, Lee issued an apology, insisting she is not a racist and that she doesn't have any proof of her claims. Despite her efforts to clarify her statements, the fallout continued, resulting in increased security measures at several Springfield institutions that had been targeted by the misinformation. As the narrative moved from Springfield to Washington, D.C., Trump referenced the baseless claims during a debate with Vice President Kamala Harris, further fanning the flames of division. The connection between Lee's inflammatory post and Trump's rhetoric underscored the dangerous power of misinformation, illustrating how quickly a community can be affected by unfounded fears and racial stereotypes. Kodak Black's remarks during his concert highlighted not only his complex relationship with Trump, but also the broader issues facing marginalized communities in America. As he navigated the backlash from his audience, he simultaneously shed light on the ongoing struggle for understanding and acceptance within a politically charged environment. The incident serves as a reminder of the deep-seated divisions within American society, where identity, politics, and misinformation collide, leading to real-world consequences. As Kodak Black prepares to visit Springfield, one can only hope for a conversation that fosters understanding, dispels myths, and ultimately bridges the gaps that continue to divide communities. The aftermath of this saga will undoubtedly ripple through social media, community discussions, and political discourse for some time to come, raising questions about accountability, representation, and the power of words in shaping perceptions and realities.